Today we are talking about clomid versus n-clomiphene and what are the significant differences between the two. Clomid, aka clomiphene citrate, this drug belongs to a class of drugs known as the Selective Estrogen Receptor Modulators, or SERMs for short, and historically they've been used for fertility induction, and they've actually worked quite well, especially with uh, women who suffer from infertility, but off-label they've been used for men with secondary hypogonadism, and it works pretty well, at least on paper in terms of you're bringing up your testosterone, if your FSH and or LH levels are low, sub, subnormal, suboptimal. So clomiphene works as a partial agonist, particularly in the hypothalamus. And what it does is, being a partial agonist, it doesn't have full receptor binding, but it does bind the receptor and kind of works as an on-demand. And what it does is it binds the receptor, and then essentially it blocks the receptor and makes your brain think that you are in a state in which you need more estradiol. And since by blocking the receptor on a partial agonist level, your brain is going to produce more FSH and more LH because, again, it thinks it's in an uh, estrogen-deprived state. Here's where enclomiphene comes into play. Clomiphene has two different isomers. It has zooclomiphene and it has enclomiphene. So let's talk about the differences between the two of them. The first isomer is zooclomiphene, and zooclomiphene is an estrogen receptor agonist. In other words, it directly binds the receptor and stimulates it and then upregulates its activity. But one of the problems with that is that if you are directly stimulating it, then you're not really going to get that negative feedback that you need from the hypothalamus, which is going to induce, you know, induce stimulation of FSH and LH. And with that being said, one of the biggest downfalls of the zooclomiphene isomer is the fact that it can actually potentially interfere with sperm production. Again, because you're not getting the FSH LH stimulation due to the pure uh, agonism of the estradiol receptor. Furthermore, it has a really long half life of roughly about a month. So if you are to have a negative side effect from it, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. And the other isomer we have is N clomiphene. And N clomiphene is an estrogen receptor antagonist. So it's going to block the estradiol receptor. And then that's going to trick your brain into thinking you're in an estrogen deprived state. And therefore the production of FSH and LH will occur. And that will therefore stimulate the production of testosterone and sperm. Another thing about the N clomiphene isomer is that the half-life is roughly 10, 12 hours. So if you're going to have a negative response to it, then, I mean, give it a day or so, it'll wash out. The N clomiphene isomer is speculated to be the isomer of clomid that produces all the positive benefits of clomid. Meanwhile, the zoo clomiphene isomer of clomid is speculated to be the isomer that induces all the negative side effects associated with clomid. So this video was designed to give you a brief, basic pharmacological review of Clomid and n -clomiphene. It was not designed to give you the pros, cons of the drugs themselves. That will be for a follow-up video. If you like it, subscribe. Thanks for watching.